30 Excel tips in just 15 minutes. So without wasting time, let's get started. And here I want to swap these two columns. So what I'll do, I'll select the second column and then hovering my mouse on the border, I will click the right click button from my mouse and then drop this column here. And it will give me this menu here. And from here, I'm going to select this option, shift, right and move. And it will swap both the columns with each other. So when I'm entering a function and I try to refer to a range which is quite long, you can see my screen also goes down with the range, with the reference. Now to go back to the current cell without using mouse, you can use this keyboard shortcut control plus shift and then equals button from your keyboard. So it will take you to the current cell instantly. You are invited in the session and who attended and now I want to know the name of people who have not attended the session. So what I'll do, I'll use the filter function and specify the invited in the first argument. And then in the second argument include, I'm going to use this function called not. And within this function, I'm going to use the function count if specifying the attended people. And then in the second argument criteria, I'm going to specify the invited names. Now I'm going to close the function count if not and filter. Now, the moment I hit enter, I'll get the name of all the people who have not attended the session. In Excel, there is an option that allows you to hide a worksheet in a way that cannot be unhide easily. And once you go to your developer tab and open the Visual Basic, and then select this sheet that you want to hide from this list, and then go to the Properties window, and, and in the Visible option, you have this drop-down, and select Excel Sheet Very Hidden. And then when you come back, you can see you don't have that worksheet in your workbook, and you cannot unhide this sheet as well. The only way to unhide that sheet is to go back to the Visual Basic Editor and change the setting from there. So this allows you to hide a worksheet that cannot be unhide easily from any Excel user. Now, if you look at this data here, I have month-wise, product-wise data, but the problem is these month columns are not in the right order. So what I'll do, I'll select these columns from April to September, and then I'm gonna press the keyboard shortcut Alt-A-S-S, -S, and from the sort, dialog box i'm going to go to options click on sort left to right and then sort order custom list and from here i'm going to select the month list and from here the row one and then i'm going to click ok so i have my columns sorted in the actual month sequence now here i have a chart with set of formattings that I have applied to this chart. Now I want to use these formattings again and again while creating column charts. So what I'll do, I'll right click on the chart and then I'll click on save as template. And I will give a relevant name and then click on save it. Now what happens is when I, again, anytime I want to create a chart or want to insert a chart, I'll go to all charts and here in the templates, I have my template saved and I can insert this chart simply using this template and this will help me to not to waste time while formatting that chart again. If you want to create a pivot table from an uh, external workbook, you just need to go to the insert tab and then from the pivot table drop down, click on the from external data source. It will ask you to create a connection. So click on the choose connection and then go for browse for more and then select the data file and click open. And it will ask you which table you want to use, click OK and here you can create a pivot table. It's pretty simple, isn't it? So I have this list of names here, but some of the names are in duplicate. So I'm going to use this function called unique. And in the first argument, I'm going to specify the range. And in the by call argument, I'm going to specify false. And again, in the exactly once, the argument exactly once, I'm going to specify false to get every distinct item. So I'll close the function and hit enter. And here I have all the names, unique names, which are 16 out of this list of 20. So I have 16 unique names from 20 names. Now, if you quickly want to create a name range, you just need to select your data and then go to your address box and then enter the name that you want to define. So let's say if I want to define the name sales data, sales underscore data, and then you simply need to hit enter and it will create a new name range. You can see here. And even if you go to the name manager and click on the button, you can see here my new name range is there. So that's the easiest way to create a named range. If you really want to create a quick insult chart, you can use this function called rept. And in the first argument, specify a straight bar from your keyboard and then specify the number. And I'm going to divide it with 50. You can use any number to divide according to the range of numbers that you have and then hit enter. Now in the end, I'm going to change the font style from here. Label. And you can see it exactly looks like a bar. 
that's it you know the best way to combine multiple columns is to use the to call function which is a new function and when i enter the to call function and select the array in the first argument and then specify to ignore blank and errors and in the end i have option to scan by rows or columns i'm going to go with scan by rows first and then hit enter i get all the names in a single column and in the same way when i enter to call again select the array ignore blanks and errors and then scan by column i get all the names by column so first column second column third column but in the first function the first formula that i've used i get names by rows the first row second row third row and the fourth row so this is the best way to combine multiple columns into one single column here i have 12 dates in the column a but i want to have first date of each of the 12 months so what i'll do i'll select these dates from first to 12 and then i'll go to fill and then series and in the series i'm going to select columns date and then month and here in the step value i will enter the one which is already there and then click ok and instantly it will convert each date into each month's first date from 1st january 1st february and then 1st december the each month's first date i have this sales data here and i want to create a quick summary table so i'll use this function called group by and in the rows field i'm going to specify the b column where i have the month start date and then i'm gonna specify sales amount in the values argument and then some function as a calculation function and then yes and show to show the headings as well so i'll close the function hit enter and here i have a quick summary table month wise summary table of all the sales data now in the column a i have data for the two columns so i have name and i have score but i have it in a single column so now i want to transform this data so what i'll do i'll use this function called wrap rows and select the range in the vector argument and in the wrap count i'm going to specify two so that i can split the single column into two different columns so the moment i hit enter it gives me two different columns with name and score and here i have these names in five different sections but i want to combine them in a single column so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this function called b stack and then select each of these range one by one and simply close the function and hit enter so you can see here i have all the names in a single column and here i want to extract only numbers from these order ids so what i'll do i'll use this function called rejects replace and then specify the cell and in the pattern i'm going to specify this pattern that means anything which is not a digit replace it with a blank value now i'm gonna hit enter but before that i also need to use one more function that is called text join so in the text join in the first argument i'm gonna specify a blank delimiter and true to ignore empty cells and in the third argument where i already have this reject replace function i'm gonna close the text join and hit enter so you can see i have only number from these order IDs. So even if I enter anything else, a new number, it gives me that number in the result. In Excel, there's a new kind of data types that you can use to extract data or information from internet. So when I enter the name of these two tech companies and then I go to the data tab and here you can see I have new data types and from this, I'm gonna select stocks. So it will instantly convert these two names into the stock data type. And now when I, refer to the cell a1 where i have the stock name of microsoft and then i enter a dot i get this list of all the information that i can extract for microsoft so if i want to know the price of the share i can simply select price and hit enter so here i have a few numbers a few cells with numbers where i have yellow color but now i want to replace this color with a light green color so what i'll do i'll select this part of the table and then i'm going to press the control h to open the find and replace dialog box and after that i'm going to click on options and from there i'm going to click on the format drop down and choose format from cell so i'll select any of these yellow color cells and i'll get the formatting and now for replace with i'll again go to the format drop down and now this time i'll go to format and select a cell color from the fill tab so i'll go with this light green color click ok and now i'm gonna click replace all but let me move it little down here and then i'm gonna plus and you can see here i have replaced yellow color with the light green color for all the 12 cells now to repeat all the values here downwards i'm gonna select this data go to my home tab and from there i'm gonna click on go to special and from here i'm gonna select blanks and click ok now the next thing is to 
enter equals to and then select the cell P2 and after that press and hold the control key and hit enter. So you can see I have filled all the values up to the next filled cell. So here I have a list of these names where I have a symbol between the first and the last name. So what I'll do, I'll use this function called rejects replace and specifying the cell and then I'm going to specify the pattern that I want to replace with. So I'll start with double quotation marks and then my pattern and then a space. So what happens is when I'm specifying this pattern, that means anything which is not small alphabet or a capital alphabet and which is not a digit. So no alphabet, no digit, anything else. So when I hit enter, it gives me the name with a space. First name, space and then the last name. I won't combine all these values into a single cell. So what I'll do first, I'll expand this column a little bit and then I'll go to my home tab and from the fill drop down and then click on justify and it will instantly combine all the values in a single cell. The same thing can also be done with the text join function. So when I enter the text join function and specify the delimiter that is a space and then true to ignore blank cells and then my range where I have the values and hit enter, it combine all the values from all the cells into a single cell. Here I have this data table and I want this row, the heading row to print on the each page when I print this data on a paper. So what I'll do, I'll go to my page layout tab and then go to print titles and from here rows to repeat at top, I'll select this arrow and then I'm going to select the first row where I have the headings and then come back, click OK. And now when I press Ctrl P, you can see here for all the three pages, I have the same row at the top. I want to add leading zeros to these values. So what I'll do, I'll select this range and open my format cells dialog box with the shortcut key control plus one and then I'll go to the custom category and here I'm going to just specify six time zeros. So it will add zeros according to the number of digits I have in the cell. So if I have four digits, it will add two zeros and if I have one digit, it would add five zeros. Let me click OK and you can see here I have leading zeros for all the numbers but if I delete one digit from this value where I have six digits it will add one zero at the starting. Now here I have this data and when I try to print this data using the keyboard shortcut control P, you can see I have this print preview here and when I go to page setup and from there I go to margins I have these two options here to structure to change the position of the data on the page so I can use horizontal and you can see here, the moment I tick mark, it changed the position of the data in the horizontally centered. And then when I click on vertically, it will make the data vertically in the middle of the page. And when I click OK, you can see my data has changed its position. Next up, so there is a new option called focus cell. So when you go to your view tab and click on this focus cell option, it allows you to highlight the current row and current column. So if you work with large data set, this option is quite useful while reading your data or analyzing your data and there's also one more option within this option that allows you to change the color of the highlighted row and column so let's say if i want to select yellow color so it will apply a light yellow color to the current column and current row if you quickly want to combine values from multiple cells into a single cell you can use this function called array to text and simply select the values and hit enter and it will combine values using a comma into a single cell. Now let's say you want to save a part of your data table as a PDF. So you just need to select that particular part and then go to file tab from there print and then from the printer option you can select this Microsoft print to PDF and from the settings you need to select print selection and then click on print. So it will ask you to save the file just give it a name and then click save and here I have my selected part of the data as a PDF saved on my desktop. So here I have few numbers in the cell A1 and I want to have a sum of these numbers. So what I'll do, I'll use the text split function first to split these numbers. So I'll select the cell and then for delimiter, I'm going to specify the comma and then close this function. Now I will also use the value function to convert these values that I'm going to get from the text split into actual numbers. And after that, I'm going to specify, I'm going to use some function to wrap it. And now the moment I hit enter, I get 145. That is the sum of these five numbers from cell A1. So when you right click on a cell and then you go to filter, you have these four options here, which are really smart options to filter your data. So when you go to filter by selected cells, font color, 
it will filter all the cells with the red font color so these are the smart options that you can use and in the same way if i go to filter and then go to selected cells color it will filter all the cells with the yellow color or you can also simply just go to filter and use selected cells value and it will filter all the values with the product laptop